composting wood chips, is it a waste of time? Maybe details on that coming up. Thanks for watching the video today. I'm Diego and my goal is to help you streamline gardening, make it easier for busy people to garden. I'm gonna say something controversial. Wood chips make terrible compost. I know that's a trigger and I know some people are screaming at their screens right now. But Diego, you have wood chips everywhere and you're absolutely right. But I'm gonna tell you why I think they make bad compost. So hear me out on this one. Watch the video and then draw your conclusions or the hate comments at the end. When I say wood chips make terrible compost, we have to define what that means in the context of this video. What it doesn't mean is the end product. If you compost wood chips, what's left is good. The key point for this video is wood chips make a bad addition to a compost pile. And I'm suggesting that not everybody goes down the route of trying to compost wood chips in the first place. For the past few years, I've been doing a ton of experiments to try and break down wood chips quickly. And the conclusion that I've drawn from all those experiments is it is not possible to break down wood chips quickly in my environment without a massive amount of resources and inputs. What do I mean by that? The first thing is particle size. To compost wood chips successfully, you have to reduce the particle size as much as possible. If you're getting them dropped off at your place for free, the ideal scenario would be you take what you get for free and you just compost that as is. But a lot of times, in my case, the real big pieces that are like hot dogs chopped in half, they're about that size, like your fingers. Those pieces are very resistant to breaking down quickly because they have a very high carbon to nitrogen ratio at about 400 carbon to one nitrogen. The ideal composting ratio is about 40 to one. So you have so much more carbon in wood chips than say something like horse manure. That's why horse manure composts beautifully and something like wood chips doesn't, at least in the short term. To try and offset all that carbon, that 400 to one nitrogen ratio, I tried to add nitrogen to this barrel right here. So instead of having 400 to one in wood chips, I said, well, let's keep the 400 carbon in wood chips and let's, let's bring up the nitrogen level, trying to decrease that ratio. And I layered blood meal into this barrel when I filled it. And then I added blood meal a few times. Looking at this barrel as it was breaking down, it's really hard to say if it made a difference. The height is still about the same as when I filled it. Maybe it's gone down a little bit and the temperatures just aren't ever getting that high. They stay a pretty consistent 80 degrees. That tells me there's biological activity happening in the barrel, but it doesn't tell me that it's breaking down really efficiently or fast like a hot composting pile that might be reading 120 to say 160. Those piles, there's a lot of biology happening, they're hotter, they're breaking down faster. The other big resource that wood chips take to break down, which is pretty scarce in my area of the world, is water. You need a lot of water to break down wood chips. This biological activity that's happening to decompose the organic matter uses a lot of water. And the problem with wood chips and water is, well, there's actually two. The first one is wood chips are not very absorbent. Just imagine putting a pile of wood chips on a table and a pile of say potting soil. If you pour water slowly into the potting soil, the potting soil is gonna to wanna to absorb a lot of that water. It's gonna eventually get saturated and then the rest of the water will leak out. But it has a high amount of absorption in the materials in the potting soil. Wood chips are the exact opposite. It's almost like they're glass marbles. You pour water over wood, sure some water is going to be absorbed on the surface, but for the most part, most of that water is just going right through the pile. With that large pore space, it just exacerbates the fact that wood chips don't want to absorb water when you pour it over it. To overcome that, like I said, you have to use some sort of vessel, barrel, solid, all sides, not letting any water leak out the top. I even went as far as to cut out some sheets of plastic like this to put over the surface, prevent surface evaporation, and there's a few holes in the bottom to drain. So very minimal 
amounts of, of water are leaving the system. I'm trying to keep as much water in the system as I can. You can see where I'm going with the large amount of inputs and resources required to break down wood chips. We need a lot of water. We need to reduce particle size. We need to put them in a vessel to reduce evaporation. And we probably also need to turn the pile as well. Part two of this small video series will be on that. Six months ago, I started several different trials, which you can see right here to break down wood chips. I had a barrel full of wood chips on the end that I mixed nitrogen and sugar into. The center barrel was a control. The other barrel on the other end was a mixture of horse manure and wood chips, so not pure wood chips. We're gonna turn those barrels over and we're gonna see what it looks like inside. I bet if I told you that these weren't two different piles, you wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. This area, basically from here over, is the pile where I added sugar and blood meal. This is the control pile. This is just wood chips straight off the truck into the barrel, water added. Visually, they look about the same. I mean, if you compare regular wood chips right here, nice light color, nice dark color, we can see, hey, there's some decomposition starting to happen, but feeling through this, looking at this, they're still really big. Like you couldn't use this as any sort of planting material. Sure, it could go on top of a bed as mulch, but so could this uncomposted virgin wood chip right here. One of our other big problems with composting wood chips was moisture. Looking at both these piles versus the control, you can see they're very moist. I mean, I can't squeeze water out of these, but they feel damp. So the vessel helped keep moisture contained. That's where our resource usage goes up because we needed this vessel. If we just had this pile sitting in the open air, it would be really hard to keep it this moist without adding water constantly. If you think about timing, this is really where I think wood chips make bad compost because I've used six months to get to this stage. Even the bioreactors behind the camera have been sitting for almost two years and I'm probably gonna have a lot of larger size wood chips when I open those up again in a few months right here on YouTube. Given that these have been sitting six months using resources like water, they're taking up space, they're also using blood meal, I'd be better to use these wood chips in other ways in the garden. And that timing reason is the biggest reason why I think wood chips don't make good compost. It just takes too long, at least in my environment. This other bin looks a lot different. It looks a lot more broken down. It's actually became quite a bit of a grub factory, which my chickens will love. Now there are still a lot of visible wood chips in here, but there's a lot less. This is about a 50-50 mix of horse manure and wood chips. So if you are gonna try and break down wood chips, you may wanna go this route. The horse manure I think is doing a few things in the pile. One, it's adding nitrogen to the pile so that 400 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio in wood chips is going down with the addition of a higher nitrogen feedstock like horse manure. The second thing is horse manure is very absorbent. So you have those non-absorbent wood chips and you're filling up some of that pore space between them within a very absorbent material. The manure absorbs the water, it holds water in the pile, allowing the microorganisms that are breaking down everything to have access to water. And as a result, you actually get pretty good looking compost after six months. Now, is this better than just straight composting horse manure? I don't know, probably not. If I'm gonna mix wood chips and horse manure, I'm probably just gonna compost the horse manure on its own and use the wood chips elsewhere. That brings us to the end of the first video in this two-part series. Stay tuned next week when we'll look at a turned pile of wood chips that also had nitrogen added. And we'll also look at where wood chips do make sense in the garden. Again, I'm not saying that they are a bad resource to use in the garden, but I think there are places that are better to use in the garden than others. In my opinion, all else being equal, wood chips make a terrible addition to the compost pile. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work. Thanks for watching the video today. We appreciate that. Watch more great videos right here.